When wannabe boxer Midge Kelly and his wife-to-be Emma Bryce share their first moment of intimacy, Midge talks about being poor. But he does it in the most profound sense of the word. He goes on to describe it evocatively with the story of his youth. You know what it is to be real poor? Cold poor? Hungry poor? No, not like that. Listen, when I was four years old, my old man ran away. Now my mother couldn't keep me and Connie both, so I went to the orphanage till I was old enough to go to work. I used to dream about getting rich someday. This story isn't much different from Carl Foreman's real-life story. Champion's screenwriter grew up in Chicago during the 1920s and his Jewish immigrant family lost everything in the Great Depression. As Performance's own account, their living situation was dire for a very long time, so much so that it traumatized the writer for life. When he finally came into some money, after his Hollywood career took off almost two decades later, he kept his savings in six different banks in different countries, just in case. That's the kind of honesty and personal experience that bleeds into the screen and sets Champion apart from other sports movies of the time. Champion was the second film of Screenplays Inc., a production company created by producer extraordinaire Stanley Kramer, who wanted to make socially relevant movies that would attract the kind of war-hardened audiences who were tired of the slick, superficial entertainment big Hollywood studios specialized in. Kramer was hungry for something more meaningful, and he believed audiences would be too. And so he wanted to make low-budget, high-impact films. Kramer thought the creative system was sterile and found in the writer-director-producer collaboration a worthy solution. With that in mind, Kramer enlisted his fellow World War II vet and friend Carl Foreman to take care of the writing. While the first Kramer-Foreman collaboration, So This Is New York, was an unmitigated disaster, Champion actually became a critical and commercial hit, making $18 million on the budget of just 550,000 in 1949 numbers. The movie also garnered Foreman his first Oscar nomination. He'd end up being nominated for a bunch more, winning for The Bridge on the River Kwai. Kramer and Foreman's marriage to Mark Robson was a perfect one. After a series of B-movies like The Ghost Ship and Isle of the Dead, which showcased Robson's keen eye for drama and artful compositions, Robson broke big with Champion, the first of two boxing movies he'd make, the second being The Harder They Fall, starring Humphrey Bogart. Champion follows the type of rise and fall structure that swept Hollywood during the Jimmy Cagney Paul Mooney years. Given the relatively short runtime, the film's a breeze, moving at the speed of a bullet train. Kirk Douglas anchors the film with his habitual gravitas, and Robson shoots it like a noir, which helps the sense of doom that permeates throughout. The boxing scenes are also pretty good, but not quite at the level of something like Robert Wise's masterful The Setup. Ultimately, what really fascinates about Champion is how the narrative inversely intertwines with the life of the person who wrote it. During the persecution of communists and people with communist ties in Hollywood, Foreman ended up being named before the House of Un-American Activities Committee by fellow writer Martin Berkeley and forced to testify to clear his name. Foreman stuck to his principles and refused to name any names, even the ones the UAC already knew, an act of defiance for which he was unofficially blacklisted. At one point, the situation in Hollywood got so bad that whispers of concentration camps for communists started gaining strength leading Foreman to seek exile in England, where he would end up staying until the mid-1970s. The sad truth about Foreman's story is that most of his close friends turned their back on him, including none other than his pal and longtime collaborator Stanley Kramer. In Champion, Foreman's anti-hero Midge Kelly does exactly the same. In order to get to the top, in order to be the best, he starts giving up on his principles, first gradually, then completely. Midge shamelessly betrays his friends and those who've helped him for his personal gain. The fact that Foreman, who came to fame and success with his script, ended up being a victim of the blacklist is tremendously ironic to say the least. Champion is a remarkable film, both inside and outside the ring. What impresses the most, however, is how Kramer and Foreman went against the grain to birth a psychologically complex movie with plenty of thrills and adult themes on such a tight budget. Champion hardly has any legacy these days, but for all the reasons we talked about and then some, it's a movie very much worth discovering. <laughs>